poverty, racism, sexism, social inequality, the destruction of the climate. But forget about all that, Jake. Did you see the Oscars? Having seen both films again since, I, I might give the edge to The Elby Blood, as much as I do love No Country for Old Men, but The Elby Blood really is fantastic. Yeah. And Day Lewis is unbelievable. <laughs> There's loads of iconic shit in it. It's just like, a really, yeah. like the whole last scene is just utterly mental. I drink your milkshake. It's really, really <laughs> incredible. It like, really is just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Sorry yeah. there, guys. We're just discussing a great Oscar season when The Elby Blood and No Country for Old Men battled it out for all of the Oscars. Uh, that was a tremendous year that also featured great movies and a real western resurgence with the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford and the often underrated 310 to Yuma but none of them won anything and they won everything <laughs> but this year it wasn't quite as good as that was it no it wasn't it wasn't I think everyone would accept that it was not a strong yeah. a very strong Oscar season um it, but have that, that it, said, <laughs> I've seen a large number of the Oscar films. I haven't seen them all. Mm -hmm. So if you've got, if you've seen a film that maybe we're not discussing or not giving enough credit to, and you strongly feel that it should have been winning an Oscar and was robbed, um, we have any thoughts on any of our comments, please leave a comment in the uh, YouTube section, and I'll be happy to run you down and prove <laughs> you wrong uh, subsequent to this video. So just to highlight that point that we just made, like I had seen about five of these films already before you even suggested we do this video. All right, okay. And I looked at the, you know, the list of nominated best pictures and I was like, what, these are all nominated? If you were a strong movie this year, you were getting an Oscar nomination because... Because the rest were just absolutely shite. <laughs> well, it just wasn't, it wasn't an very Oscar-y year. Yeah. It wasn't very oscar -y. There wasn't a lot of like big, sort of small films. Yeah. It was, <laughs> big small films. Which doesn't, so it doesn't shock me that a movie like La La Land was so, like, tipped to basically tip, like, sweep the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Doesn't very ha much happen very often, but when I saw that it was nominated, it had got, like, a record amount of nominations or something. Yeah. Um, and it was sort of like, well, it could win them all. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 it was. It really could win them all. Like, that's what I was thinking, really. As was. soon as you saw it, it was, like, a bit of a no-brainer, really, that that would be one of the contenders. Yeah. So, um, but, so we're going to go through the Oscars, um, the main Oscars. Let's ignore the fact that actor is first and let's go for actress. Oh, okay. Actress I like that. in a leading role first. Okay. Actress in a leading role, Jake. So I have only seen La La Land from this. Um, so, oh no, sorry, sorry. Um, everyone only saw La La Land from these nominations. <laughs> okay. That was it. No that's one not, has seen anything that's else. That's not you. Everyone's everyone's I, only seen this film. Okay, I do know I do know, for instance, that Natalie Portman is nowhere near a good enough actress to be playing uh Jackie and having and being praised. I've seen the trailer for yeah. Jackie, um, in which Portman her, probably does quite a... I, I imagine Portman does a decent yeah, Her job. accent is terrible, man. Well, I know. Her I'm accent just... is atrocious. I liked her... In yeah. fairness, Portman did deserve it for Black Swan. She's very good in Black Swan. Oh, yeah, but we're talking about these Oscars. I know, I'm just saying. Are you trying to slide her <laughs> off as an actress? People like to believe in fairy tales. I believe that the characters we read about on the page end up being more real than the men who stand beside us. Not only were... The other actress nominate the other actress nominations coming from movies that very few people had seen and were not mainstream um, yeah. to to any real extent. Um, it, it just Emma Stone and La La Land just had such momentum that it would have been a real shock. Um, and Emma Stone winning it, I, having not seen any of the others, I can't comment and say that they that she absolutely did produce the best performance. But she was very good in La La Land, mm -hmm. um, so I can't really say that she didn't There's deserve it. a lot of it. very emotion, emotional scenes from Emma Stone in La La Land where she's like crying and, you know, screwing She did a good cry. Yeah, and... she did a lot of crying and got a screw up yeah. face, but she was also funny, very relatable, and every woman. Um, she, was, she was very relatable in this film. I feel yeah. like there wasn't... You could not watch that movie and be like, oh my God, Emma Stone is such a bitch. <laughs> I fucking hate Emma Stone. Like, how could you think that? She's just utterly lovable. It really, seems really down to earth. Um... And just did everything right in the film. So let's move on to best actor. Um, yeah. Can we talk about Andrew Garfield? Because again, That's our ridge. I don't know like, what you're talking about. I just I want to help my <laughs> friends. I just want. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm religious, but I just want to help everybody out. Was that was that good? Was that a good version? That of was that? pretty much exactly what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. I thought um, it was pretty. I thought it was, I thought it was okay. I thought it was all right. Yeah. Like, I did there. If and I I was gonna I make did. the same point about. Um, 
uh, Natalie Portman. In oh the other yeah, thing. you already made that black. Yeah. Like basically, if you're gonna get someone with an accent like that, why yeah. not just get an actor or an actress that has that accent? Yeah, I why know. put? I can do it very like, well. Yeah, exactly. But Andrew Garfield, his accent was not believable at all. And because I know him from other things as well, it was like. No, that's not your accent, mate. Like, it's I think, completely different. Yeah, I think Garfield boy had been nominated. I thought Hacksaw Ridge as a whole, the film to me, I have one word to describe it, I've seen it. Well, not two words, but one of them is, you know, an adverb. I just think it was a bit hokey. Mm. That's what, that's my comment, a bit hokey. Yeah. N- none of those words were adverbs, I apologise. But yeah, hokey. It's like unintentionally cheesy, I guess. And, uh, yeah, it was really hokey. It when was it was just meant sort of like, to be hard hitting. Yeah, it was like... The war scenes were all like the action scenes were very well done, yeah. and we know Gibson can do he can do great action scenes. We've seen him do that. Apocalypto, I thought was fantastic, um, mm-hmm. and the action yeah. scenes in Apocalypto were brilliant, really, really intense, really, yeah. really well achieved. Um, and the scenes in Axel Ridge are very, very well done when he's sneaking through the tunnels. It's all very compelling and actiony. Mm-hmm. But to me, it just doesn't feel like I couldn't believe that that's what war was like. I was just like, there's no way this is what it was like. Yeah, especially when he starts like dragging yeah, all the bodies and, he's just and like, stuff. Come on, give like, me a sand uh, guard, and he's like, that's what I'm going to do, and he's dragging it, them off and stuff like that. It, it was becomes like, almost comical because you know all of these characters, like it's introduced you to these characters, well, yeah. and he's basically saving them all one by one, and it's like, well, yeah, to hey, a point. hey, mate, yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah. I'm over here, kind he of thing. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, well, the thing was, as happens in all war movies, and I do, this is just something that happens to me. I can barely tell who who is who when those things when shit starts to hit the fan. Yeah, like you definitely. know when things people get brought up. I very I always struggle to really to recognise who's um, who. I struggled had, in Brothers. Br- um, it had a very Full Metal Jacket kind of feel yeah. where it's like the first act. It's very, like yeah, getting, yeah, getting, yeah, getting to know everyone yeah, and it's yeah. like that's clearly the like kind of the best. <coughs> act. I love yeah. Full Metal Jacket for that. Everyone for loves that the first, first act. Full Metal. Act. No one even remembers the second act. Full <laughs> no, metal but jacket. the second act is, it good is really as well. good. It is really good. But the first um, act is yeah, utterly compelling. Then, Any war movie that attempts to have someone being like attacked by his friends and sort of like you know you're not tough enough to handle this unit, <laughs> you know they, it should be and usually always is compared to Full Metal Jacket, which um, has just an exceptional first act and. It's so compelling. It's so mm. iconic. It's ah. so well done. You know what? As well, the love story in, oh, it was in shit. Hacksaw it Ridge. Was shit. It, it was, was so yeah. fucking it was really contrived. poor. It was really poor. Yeah, it was I weak. can't believe it. Weak I across don't... the board. It's weak across <laughs> the board. But and Garfield. <laughs> yep, he was never going to win this. Really. What about Gosling? Lyle, and what do you think? Would you think that he should have won it? What do you think? Um, not his best role by a long way. I would say. Like he he serves his purpose in La La Land. I would say. I think and he's he, nothing I, beyond. I that. think it's. I think that's a very fair comment. I think. <laughs> Gosling has written well. I've seen him receive some flack for not being this incredibly strong singer in it. And that's something. Not that I mind. I don't think he does a particularly bad it, vocal. It, it, it didn't or, need to be it, a exactly. strong singer. <laughs> didn't need to be at all because so it, and uh, Gosling. I think he's just he's incredibly cool in the film. Like uh, Gosling always mm. is. Um, he plays his role really, really, um, really well. But I, it's certainly not an Oscar-winning performance, and it, it would have been wrong to give him it, in my opinion. In my opinion, they took a lot of influence in the writing of the character from other. Gosling he, performances. Other Gosling performances, yeah. I'd yeah. say that's and, not... And that worked uh, yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah, It yeah. really worked. Denzel in Fences. What, I have not seen it yet, but... Denzel Washington in Fences. Absolutely brilliant. Obviously, he's he would be my pick. But yeah. I haven't seen Manchester by the Sea. Uh, the whole film, Fences, is like 100% character-driven. Yeah. What Denzel's very, 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 very good at... Denzel, you'll never watch a film and think, oh, Washington, we're throwing that in. You'll yeah. never watch a yeah. film. He just... Imp- any character is, it's just incredibly believable. Yeah. Like, and I mean, like, ridiculously believable. In yeah. any film and he's in, it always brings the realism. I think more so little than touches anything in his he's done in this film, Fences, yeah. he, he really suits that character. Yeah, I think yeah. it's just, like, probably up there in yeah. his top three performances yeah. definitely um, and that's you know it's a strong statement and I can only imagine that he must have been a front runner to, I've not Captain Fantastic we won't discuss because neither of us have seen it no. I'm sure Vigo's very good but I have seen Manchester by the Sea and Casey Affleck is, is fantastic in it it really really is great there's a lot of really fine nuances to everything is, that, that's going on um, and he really he performs them all brilliantly mm-hmm. there's the moment the moments of comedy within the movie his timing's perfect he, he he has to do there's a full range really going on from Affleck and it probably is his best best ever performance and it, it's really been it's been a front runner in the award season and it probably I would say without having seen Fences I would say that uh, Affleck was yeah a worthy winner 
So, actor in a supporting role. Yeah. Uh, Mahesh, Mahershala. Mahershala Ali, mate. Yeah. Mahershala Ali. I was watching it and I knew that he'd won it and I was yeah. thinking, like, You're why? Waiting for his big scene, aren't you? Yeah, I was waiting for, like, waiting his... Waiting for his big scene. And, and I kind of got what, what it was. It was, like, when he was explaining yeah, to him... About, um, um, about what a fag it is. What it is to be a man and stuff like course, that. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, in that way, I kind of understood why he got it, but... And again, I can't really compare it to anything else other than Lion, which, which fuck off, that shouldn't have even been nominated because it was shite. Oh, was it shite? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Is it shit? Yeah. Nicole Kidman gives one of the most oh, hilarious I performances Kidman, Kidman, ever. Right. I'm not without, right, to, to, right, as an aside. Yeah. Um, and Nicole, I saw that Nicole Kidman was nominated for, for Lion, and I have not seen the film. I can't recall a great Nicole Kidman performance in the last 15 years. She has been dreadful for years and years and years. And when I saw her, that she was in this film, I sort of thought to myself, literally, you saying that, I've not seen Lion yet, but I could I could almost, I could assume that she was terrible in it. Yeah. And really, really shit and really it's, hokey. It's the worst really performance I've ever seen of her, like, ever. It's, I, I massively don't like her as an actress, so when it comes to best supporting actress, we'll discuss that a bit, I suppose. But, I suppose yeah. we can, but Dev Patel, it was kind of just as bad because he was acting in scenes with her yeah and you could tell he was struggling to kind of bounce off of her and like yeah. get get through this scene and and well, the chemistry act. was poor was it poor yeah the chemistry was poor michael shannon in nocturnal animals i thought this was when i found out he was nominated i'd seen nocturnal animals and i thought it it should have been nominated for more things i think it should have got a best picture nomination uh, i was very very surprised to see that jake gyllenhaal wasn't nominated for best actor i thought he was fantastic in it really really outstanding performance um, Amy Adams in both Arrival and Nocturnal Animals. A lot of people thought it could have been her year, um, but she just seemed to really fall out of favour in the uh, in the upcoming in the as the awards sort of season started to pan out, which just happens. I, uh, neither performance were her strongest, and I think it's fair enough that she wasn't nominated or didn't win either one of them. Michael Shannon's really really good in Nocturnal Animals, and when I found out it was nominated, I thought he deserved it. Uh, really really strong performance. Um, I've yet to see Hello High Water. Uh, I can only assume Jeff Bridges is fantastic. He always is. Always brings his absolute A game. But you could tell from this selection of ca- of candidates that there was just no way Jeff Bridges was going to win this Oscar. Unless that performance was outrageously good. <laughs> he was just never going to win it because if you look at who he's up against. To be fair, I think the real winner um, of this, of who should have won it, was Lucas Hedges in Manchester by the Sea. Yeah. He's fantastic. Really, and I mean genuinely, really like, he's going scene for scene with Affleck. Cool. He, he really steps into it, and I've never, I've not seen him in anything else. His accent is exceptional, um, really, really, really tight, um, and he just, he's just fantastic in it. Has to, again, has to go for a, low, a wide range like Affleck does, and for a young actor, he's absolutely this guy's got a massive future ahead of him because it really was outstanding in this film, and um, he would have been my personal choice to win Best Actor. And Mahashala Ali, I think, was fortunate in the sense that he's barely in Moonlight. Yeah. He really is barely in it. Um, and he, while he is in it, he is, he's a good performance. It's yeah. a very good performance. How, For me, I would I'd say, say he, ca- he kind of carries the first He does carry the first act. He does. And I think the movie is worse from then on without yeah. him in it, yeah. um, personally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Lucas Hedges would have been my shout. Um, but I understand why Ali won uh, Best Spot and Actor. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm a strong believer that Viola Davis should have won an Oscar by now um, and this performance in Fences was just like again uh, such a brilliant casting like of her in that role and um, the acting skills that you need to have for that particular role are just like top top level kind of thing yeah really so, really good yeah I'm gonna, if, if we discuss then the other performances that I have seen um, yeah, sure. so I've seen Naomi Harris in Moonlight but I think it shows you the lack of depth in this year that this performance was nominated. I thought she was as average as you could be as a, <laughs> as a heroin addicted mother. Yeah. I thought she brought as little to it as you could possibly bring yeah. while still being a convincing drug addict. Yeah, um, I kind of was feeling like I'd seen this character yeah, before. Oh, so many like, times, yeah. Just, yeah, me, nothing um, really to it. I thought, know? yeah, really, as a, just bringing nothing particularly exceptional to the performance yeah a very for, uh, you know I think it's a fortunate nomination um, I've seen Michelle Williams in Manchester by the Sea again it's it's a strong performance she's very very good in the moments that she's in it um, and it's not a, it's not a particularly um, not an easy character for her to play 
wasn't a large performance of her, of her being in it. And I can imagine Viola Davis is practically the second, basically a lead in Fences. I can imagine she's in it quite a lot. Oh, yeah, she's basically yeah. joint lead yeah. with, uh, with So, me. for one of the, I think it's one of those, probably a strategic move that some that studios sometimes go away if they feel like if it was going to be her and Stone and if they dropped her into this category, she would win it, then they probably did decide to do that. Yeah, that's if a it's good her move, and De- I mean, you know, case. For example, if you see True Grit, um, Hayley Steinfeld in True Grit is in the film considerably, which is in every scene, basically, of the movie. Um, and yet Jeff Bridges gets a Best Acting nomina- best Actors nomination and she's got Best Supporting. Um, sometimes a move from the studio is to put an actor who they feel has a far stronger chance of winning in a sm- in a category that's less crowded. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the probably it was probably tactical on there. It was a good tactical move because mm-hmm. this category is so weak. I can only imagine she far and away had the best performance, best animated feature. So I've actually seen three of these. I've seen Kubo and Zootopia, and I think those were the two front runners. If I'm yeah, um, Kubo of the th- of the three I've seen, which is Moana, Zootopia, Kubo. Yeah. Kubo just blew blew it away, really. Um, not that the other films were bad, because I really liked them. Yeah. I liked them all. Um, but Kubo and the Two Strings was like a step above sort of any animated film I've yeah. seen recently. You very rarely see an animated category that, that is this tight. I really did think, like, sure. it could go anywhere, and you, wouldn't, you, you couldn't really complain and be like, no fucking way. This is just an absolute load of shit. Yeah, I'm not sometimes, particularly annoyed at Zootopia. Exactly, ones, like, so. and that, that's the thing. Like, it was just you don't really see an animated category this tight. Good year for animation. Yeah, a really strong year. Um, and I think, for me personally, I absolutely loved Kubo, and he absolutely should have won something. Mm-hmm. Um, as we're not going to go into the other categories in too much detail, uh, it was nominated for best special effects, and I think it should definitely have won it, that. It should have won that. It should have yeah. won the technical award um, because. Mainly because it's one of those things where you sometimes have to just look at what they tried to achieve and what they did achieve. Yeah. They didn't use computers. They tried to do something different. It was different style of animation. And they succeeded enormously with it. Like, and, yeah. you know, it takes a lot. You, can, you don't make these films all the time. They're not ten a penny. Like, a CG, you know, as as good as Utopia, as good as one of that, there's animated films. Disney produce strong animated films almost every year. Um... And a movie comes like along like Kubo, once every now and then, the animated style like that, and to, to, to achieve what they achieve within the film, it's a fantastic picture. Um, and the special effects is tremendous. I think it absolutely should have won the other the technical award. Mm-hmm. This award, I, I, I do have to honestly say that which film did I did I enjoy the most, like of pure enjoyment from my perspective, which film did I, I love the most? I've got to say Zootopia. I have okay. to be, I've got to be completely honest, and I don't. And that's not me, and you know it does pay me to to say that a little bit because I did absolutely love Kubo and the Two Strings, but there were just elements of the film that were that were somewhat sparse. The twists are all very obvious in Kubo, like you can just everything that happens is sort of like there's no you know the, the twists are all like whoa I didn't see that one coming. It's sort of all <laughs> like well yeah I guess I was waiting for that not to be the case. Sort of you know it's almost like it almost plays out too predictably. Yeah. But Zootopia for me I just I, I was just really capturing it. I love I personally am a huge noir fan anyway. Absolutely love the genre. So to see it, to see like an animated film do a noir story in such an entertaining world with really good social commentary, really really great scripts, and it just be endlessly entertaining. I thought it was just a fantastic, fantastic film. Cinematography, well, cinematography. I've got to say, La La Land, Land. It definitely just looked unbelievable. It, so the scene. I, I was saying to you when I first saw it. Yeah. Um, there's a scene when Emma Stone walks past the club and yeah. she hears that music, and she stops dead between these two red yeah. neon lights and the camera just shot. stops perfectly there. Everything is, is like composed like it's that really well perfectly. Shot, yeah. It's so a beautiful, beautiful cinematography, it. great. It's a beautiful shot film as well and it's, and it's yeah. one of several elements that elevate a really, really traditional story way beyond yeah. what um, where you know what it should have really been. The cinematography is just one element of the film that is outstanding mm-hmm. and it really is a beautiful looking <laughs> film. So Moonlight had a lot of quite strange cinematography, I thought, mm. um, which took me out of the experience a bit. There was a few scenes where there were lens flares <coughs> used for no particular reason. Then there was like, just randomly dead in the middle of the film, you had a scene where a camera was attached to a car door, and as the car door opened, the camera like swung outwards, mm. swung back in. 
There was also bits where people started talking, but it was like the previous shot. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And I did absolutely I, know that. Yeah. It, it happened like twice in the film yeah, yeah. for no real reason. Yeah. It had no like effects. You're right Just about that. Why yeah, did that happen? Right. You are absolutely right. <laughs> I think Moonlight was caught between a lot of like a, a comment that we'll come back to when we're discussing Best Picture. But I feel like Moonlight was caught between a few different styles. Yeah. Of, of it, what kind of film it was. It's it was, like it was, was trying to be. be more artistic than it necessarily needed to be. Yeah, potentially. Um, and yeah, I think it was caught between a few different art styles. Um, Arrival was. Uh, I, I really liked the sets and everything in Arrival, but. There was nothing in there. I was like, "Whoa, what? That's <laughs> visually incredible, or anything." I'd, yeah. You know, no way. Well, it won't put it anywhere. Not, not close to what La La Land was was going for. Um, Lion, uh, and that's the end of what we'll discuss there. Okay. <laughs> costume, uh, costume design. Costume. Should we discuss that? Uh, fantastic Beasts. Where to find them? Oh, well, great film. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'm not just. Is it good? Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Oh, like, okay. It's really good. Um, I've not seen. Um, this is what I like to call. It. I'll discuss this in an Oscars in in a way that Oscars work. Sometimes there are big films, um, and this is what this, in the technical um, area as well. You'll see this. Sometimes there are just massive movies, um, really big films. The Dark Knight, for example, um, but largely a lot of superhero films, big blockbusters, Star Wars, these sorts of films that win costume design, that win shit Oscars basically. <laughs> now they just win Oscars because they just. And I'm not even gonna say they excel in a certain area, but it's sort of like this film was great. But it's not a best picture because that's just not how the Oscars work. Dark Knight totally should have won. <laughs> but it wasn't, you know, barely even in the running, was it? But, um, you know, but you know, sign up, those sort of big films just very rarely win, aren't really nominated for them. They very rarely have an acting performance that's of such a calibre that's going to win any sort of acting nomination. Yeah. But at the same time, the Oscars do feel like they need to sort of acknowledge big, big, big films mm-hmm. um, and the blockbusters. Uh, and it's sort of, you do often find that Oscars go to these films in these areas, unless yeah. a best picture had a truly, truly excelled in one of those areas. Which, like Lord of the Rings. Like Lord of the Rings did, for example, which is why Lord of the Rings won so many Oscars, because <laughs> every single aspect of it is phenomenal. <laughs> So um, what you're saying is basically that Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is a bit more of a mainstream movie. Absolutely. But it was also really well made. Yeah. So and, well, they, well, they and it also had decent costume design. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You know, I, without looking at any of these other films, um, you know, Jackie, for example, the costume designs there were probably going to be like, right, we need to recreate stuff from photos and, you know, mm-hmm. they go along those sort of lines. Um, there's no other film that was really there's no nomination there where they were attempting anything particularly outrageous or anything like that Yeah, I think it's one of those things where well, how come Star Wars isn't in there or how come you know we, how come um, Captain America Civil War wasn't on it yeah. sort of you know I mean, what I'm saying you would like, think that those kinds of films would you know, be in there exactly because yeah. they've got to come up with loads of costumes you have to build you know they have to design all these suits and everything yeah. you, you and usually it's not just, just like film. shit people have done before like exactly, uh, yeah. 50s style of course like yeah that. exactly it's like you know you, you are seeing something new from those sort of films but it's, it's often those sort of they don't usually nominate all of those films at once <laughs> it's usually just like one of them and I don't yeah. know where they come up with it like you know, what was was Fantastic Beasts that much of a cut above the Civil War in terms of its costume Oh, I haven't seen any of well, those films. Well, exactly. So. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's just, but that's usually, it, these sort of technical areas are usually where they give a big film an Oscar to sort of credibilise it and yeah, also sure. sort of be like, oh, it's won an Oscar. What Oscar? Not, not important what Oscar it won. <laughs> it's an Oscar winner. Sort of like. So, Best Director for the last two years has rightly gone to um, Inaritu uh, for Birdman and... Um, the Revenant, uh, back to back winner. You don't usually see it because very rarely does a director produce two films of such exceptional quality in two consecutive years. Unless they're South Korean. Unless, well, how long Dragon Godzilla in or you isn't? No, I mean, oh, uh, right. you he said in back to back in two years. Oh right, who what? Who does that in South Korea? Like all the South Korean directors. Well, they're just constantly doing... They're just constantly every doing two amazing. Years, every two years. Yeah, they're just constantly doing amazing One films. Back, that, that was great. <laughs> the next year is going to be even better. Uh, so for this, I think absolutely should have gone to, should have gone to La Land. It's the most ambitious piece. It's the most well-realised. It's most... You know, the director had a lot of shit to do with this. Mm-hmm. Um, so Giselle, yeah, did a great job. I'd say Kenneth Lonergan did a great job for Manchester by the Sea. Um... That he was also very good, and there's a lot of very tough performance he had to direct there, <clears throat> uh, and the, and he also wrote that, um, so it was really his whole vision. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, can't really disagree with this, and also the youngest best best director of all time, 
which is like a nice sort of little thing for the Oscars. Um, like a good record, don't you? Yeah, one thing that stands out to me about La La Land um, is how risky it was to it's do that, piece, that yeah. first scene yeah. where it goes straight into yeah, like yeah. not not introducing you to the main characters yeah, or anything, not all. just straight into a musical piece that isn't really about anything. Yeah, not really. But it's just like fun. Isn't it's it? great. It is <laughs> fun. But to be honest with you, the opening to La La Land is actually... I didn't really... I was sort of like, oh, God, I'm in for, like, a real cheesy sort of... I think it's the most heavily criticised yeah, thing about yeah. it is it's... the fact that it opens with just, like, a cheesy It's number. a really sort of up-tempo, but, yeah. really classically Broadway song, but the rest of the songs don't really fall into that format, I don't no. think. <laughs> but, yeah, very much a definitely a risky decision and a really, really, like, a massive long shot. Loads of huge long shots in the film, which, uh, which as far as I'm concerned, is, if you want to win an Oscar for directing, always go for huge long <laughs> shots because they're just so hard to do, like... You know, it does yeah. take a lot of, you know, that's the director's job is to pull everything together there, isn't it? So it was, you know, really well, you know, just a tremendous job. I think it absolutely deserves it. So best foreign language picture, uh, The Salesman, um, an Iranian film about a salesman. Um, a rightful winner in my mind. Yeah, it deserved it. Really? Was, yeah. Do you not think um, The Handmaiden by Park chan Wook deserved it? No, not for me. No, don't right. really think so. But let's just move on to a different yeah. category, right. I think. Have you have you seen any of these films? What's though? that? I think we should just move on, really. Oh. Really, I think we should just move on to the next All category. Right. Okay. Uh, makeup, I've... I mean... Yeah, I've seen a meme about this, like yeah. where it's like Suicide Squad and it's uh, Harley Quinn with a smudged makeup yeah. face and then like some amazingly detailed yeah. alien from Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Star Trek clearly should have won it over. I think, well, I guess. I've not seen Suicide Squad. I don't know how Suicide Squad does not but... deserve anything. Well, it yeah. doesn't deserve anything. <laughs> like... It's a weird one, but you've only got to look at it. It really is. There's three fucking options. Just the, just, I think the Oscars this year were just like, oh, who gives a fuck? <laughs> I really did just think, fucking hell, are we still giving out this award? Fucking <laughs> scrap makeup. this. I think they must be on the verge of scrapping it. It's that fucking... Yeah, well, if there's only three, like... Well, exactly, like, Jesus Surely Christ. there's more um, films you to They're going to be nominated, exactly, fucking um, hell. But anyway, yeah, Suicide Squad... It, it deserved an Oscar for worst picture of the... Of I, I don't think that's... I don't think they give more Oscars <laughs> for that, Jay. Okay. Uh, music... Obviously, La La Land. Yeah. Um, but I, there is something to say about Moonlight, which is the choice of the style of the songs. Yeah. Which I found to be not very well thought through. Um, again, it's a case of perhaps it's been trying to be a bit more artistic than mm, than yes, it needs to be. It was very classical. Um, and it, it like the the tone of the music was very mysterious. Mm. However. Moonlight's plot was just smacking you in the face the whole time. It was like, literally, this is the plot. The one there was a lot of like build, like a lot of like crescendo sort of builds. Yeah, in the yeah. One like it's like, a really tense sort of like. Well, I mean, obviously La La Land won it because obviously the fucking movie is the fucking score, so <laughs> obviously it was gonna win it. Yeah, I I would agree with that. Decision. Best original song, Jake. Um, you tell me your suggestion. I'll tell you what was what should have won it. I'm not sure what it's actually called, but the flashback scene in La La Land, where it's basically an overture, but at the end. Oh, the the last song in the overture at the end of of La La Land is called like I think it's called Epilogue, and it's the combination. It's basically yeah, it's the, the combination yeah. of all, all the tracks. Yeah. However, no, I'm wrong actually because I I love the bit where Emma Stone is looking in the mirror. No. Um, at that part of uh, somebody, someone in the and, crowd. Yeah. Like this, yeah. And then she she comes out and everyone's like stood as yeah, statues and, and it's like, like and it builds like a and it builds up. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. It was just so much fun, wasn't it? What a wonderful <laughs> film Island was. Why are we even discussing any other movies, Jake? It was brilliant. Um, no, my personal feeling was it can't stop the feeling from Trolls should have won it. Just in Timberlake. Um, you're wrong, Jake, about your La La Land predictions. Can't stop the feeling from the movie Trolls. Trolls deserved an Oscar, for one thing. It fucking deserved one. And it was only nominated for Best Song. So if that's all it can win, well, fuck it. It should have won it. All right? 
Trolls fucking classic. And Justin Timberlake's Can't Stop the Feeling, I've heard that. I've, I've not heard City of Stars in a fucking <laughs> club. I've not heard City of Stars in prison in town. I have heard Can't Stop the Feeling. Production design. Yeah, well, and obviously, move on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> short film, not seeing any of them. Yeah, deserved it. These are the, like, the short film, those sort of, the short films, it's basically just a, a way to get normal people to the Oscars. I remember, like, some guy from Leeds, I think, had, like, it was in for, like, a short picture. All right, really. And it was just, it's a way to get normies into the Oscars. Yeah, like, sure. people who, like, oh, well, bless you, you, bless you for yeah, your little picture. Like, you've if, done well. If you're an aspiring well, filmmaker, yeah. it is usually the thing. It's sort of like, well, I guess you're always fucking, oh, I'm going to have to make a short, because yeah, I can't fucking make yeah. a feature. And it's like, oh, um, go on, you. You made a great short. Get, to your, get yourself to the Oscars, lad. Sound editing. Mm. Kind of my area of expertise, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I, really I, liked. I understand why Arrival won it, sort mm. of, but again, like, it's for the alien for sounds. For the alien sounds, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I don't find, I don't, I didn't find it particularly creative or, yeah, yeah. like, original, the, the alien yeah, yeah. sounds. Very much. Well, Half Life um, did it first, didn't it, really? Let's be honest. Half Life <laughs> did everything first. Um, um, however, I will say that Hacksaw Ridge, just in general, had phenomenal sound. Like, and yeah, the editing was a massive part of what made those action scenes uh, as good as they were. Mm. Oh, okay, so this is where we need to really be serious here, because... Yeah. Have you seen Ju Jungle Book? Yes, I have seen Jungle Book. And visual effects, like, what? They were yeah. crap. Well, I don't... I they, mean... weren't, they weren't the worst visual <laughs> effects I've seen, but Doctor Strange, if you just look at the first scene in Doctor Strange when um, uh, Tilda Swinton is doing whatever she's doing and like all the buildings are like separating yeah, from each other good shit, yeah, have you not seen it I'm not seeing it no, but all it's right, good okay. shit yeah Doctor Strange had phenomenal special effects and they looked real that's the point I'm yeah, making yeah. they looked like they were actually happening Jungle Book it was just some shitty CGI animals that looked proper fake yeah they looked fake I had they someone say seriously fake. I had someone say they looked real no they worked, looked fake but I guess I'm going to trust your opinion more over that I've not seen it um, especially um, the giant orangutan yeah. um, I don't I still don't know to this day why they decided to make it giant uh -huh. but um, Christopher Walken plays um, ooh, 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 I yeah. want to be like you the orangutan and they just decided it was just going to be a giant around yeah, but did it look like beautiful? Did it look amazing? <laughs> it didn't look amazing at all. It looked very fake. Uh -huh. Like, and oh, the, ki the kid it, was stood there looking at it like, yeah, just look at this giant green screen. Look at the green of. screen, child. Look at the green screen. We're making a movie. Look at the green screen, little boy. <laughs> Pretend it's a big uh, orangutan. Let's let's move on now to Kubo and the Two Strings. Yeah, which, Kubo should have won. Which one hundred percent should have won. Yeah, for we visual touched on that earlier, but yeah, it absolutely should have won for visual effects. Like, seems seriously. a weird. I thought it seemed a weird. When I looked at, it, I thought Jungle Book just seemed a bit of an easy. <laughs> who thought? Who, 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 who on the category was just like? Well, I loved Jungle Book. <laughs> like some guys just like, do we even like? Literally, all these people are literally there to judge films like critical <laughs> cinema, and it's like. Okay, visual effects guys, it's like, oh fucking hell, all these blockbusters are all the fucking same. <laughs> have I got to watch these? Let's have a look. Right, Jungle Book, whatever. Fucking get me out of this room. I bet they're all like, fuck this shit. Fucking Rogue One, I've got to go sit through that again. <laughs> fucking hell. I bet they're all really struggling with it, but they should have been, they should have been delighted by Kubo. Yeah. <laughs> and clearly they weren't, which is a real shame. Should we talk about best picture then? Aaron? Best picture, what you're all here for. Yes, Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway, a couple of old people that, yeah, you young people <laughs> don't know them, but they were good actors back in the day. And you know, they deserve some fucking respect. Warren Beatty's up on stage looking like an absolute mug. He's looking at this card that's been handed to him by an absolute imbecile. He's looking at it and he's like, ha, ha, oh really? Ha, oh, what? And Faye Dunaway's like, fucking read it, mate. It's la la la, what are you praying at? And he's like, yeah, but it says Emma Stone. She didn't, Emma she's Stone not the didn't direct she it. Wasn't, right? She wasn't, she wasn't, why does Emma Stone on it? Yeah, but just read it. She must have won it. We would have been handing the wrong card, would we? Well, I think we might have been. I don't know. Well, Alan's probably won it anyway. Well, yeah, but you read it then, love. You read it. She's like, oh, fucking hell. La la la. <laughs> Jesus, get up here. Emma Stone. La la la. <laughs> get up em here. Emma, Emma come on. Emma, get up here. You do it. She's like, oh, shit. Give the speech. I don't know why anyone else give the speech. Now, is, it, is it true that they, they gave them the wrong card because they were distracted by taking, by taking pictures of Emma Stone? I mean, she's pretty hot, like that, but you yeah. know, like, don't, no need to get that distracted. It was one of them where it's like, 
He literally got one job. You've got, you know, <laughs> he got one job. And like, <laughs> got organize a bunch of pieces. The thing of is, paper. I don't even like they're accountants. That like it's like this accountancy team who are doing it. Like it's this this team of accountants who give it. <laughs> what the? What's that about? Why are we only learning this now? Why are accountants? Aren't accountants just like have to like deal with like financial information and such shit? Why are we giving accountants exactly. the job of handing out envelopes? It's like the the guy who's in. Whoever's in charge of the Oscars makes a public statement. Oh yeah, um, we accidentally we accidentally hired accountants to do to do this job, rather than doing our accounting. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we don't know. We we, 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 just, we hired them. And we don't. Have, we didn't have any accounts. We're, we're too busy evading taxes to actually have the need for accountants. Yeah. But we paid them, so we thought, oh, give out some envelopes at the Oscars. We're meant to just um, get some students on a uh, placement year to to handle. <laughs> those those cards uh-huh. but you know it had to be the accountants <laughs> the accountants had to do it they're the only people qualified to hand out envelopes apparently can't even do that so yeah it was an absolute debacle I've never seen anything it's one of those things where you kind of you think about it and it's one of those things where when you're watching the Oscars you're like oh I wonder what if they've given them the wrong card <laughs> you know you sort of think to yourself oh what, yeah. if, what would happen if they gave them the wrong card yeah. or you know like, do they know beforehand mm-hmm. like does the person who's about to read it out do they already know and that sort of thing it's sort of one of those thoughts yeah. you have it kind of proves that they don't know yeah well it, it absolutely proves they just have no fucking clue they read out the best picture being what everyone thought was going to be best picture so no one was like oh where everyone was like oh you know you had social justice warriors being like oh my god moonlight should have fucking won it like this is an absolute disgrace this is hollywood saying that gay people don't matter black people don't matter you had those people already typing things out like <laughs> fuck la la land <laughs> fuck all the gay people who made that movie there was another movie about gay people that didn't win <laughs> people already preparing like huge essays about why it was a disgrace that la la land won and that moonlight was the best picture by a mile oh, the god, and it was the most one. important picture ever it was absolutely the best thing ever and it should have definitely won people were already feverishly typing this out as La La Land won it and then somehow it did win and no one knows what the fuck happened they were like no no there's been a mistake Moonlight's the best picture and like the guy's having to like you know be literally like no it's not a fucking joke Moonlight wins no it really is not a joke it wasn't like it, it wasn't it's even if the, the, it, I think everyone thought the guy was like you know what Moonlight was the best picture you've done the wrong thing Oscars everyone thought that to begin with it's, and everyone was like yeah well said well said, you, know, well said you know well said they did sort of deserve it no I'm being fucking serious I don't think they should have won but they did win um, you know they really have won it and I don't fucking know what's going on it's one of them things that as you're watching it your brain cannot pro- possibly process like is he telling the truth it when was he's so saying bizarre. It's, it really when he's was. saying this is not a joke? Is he actually not telling the truth still? It and, was just totally and surreal. In that way, I can only imagine like how the people actually there were feeling. Uh, like, it really <laughs> yeah. was like it, it, it was but, an absolute debacle, yeah. and it is worthy of it, it. Really is worthy of discussion because yeah. it was such an absolute catastrophe. It's, it's <laughs> great though because I've seen pictures of Ryan Gosling as it was happening, and he's just like. Like proper, he's, he's laughing his head off. He's like loving he's it. Just like what the fuck? Like what is happening? I know they both like. It's been Emma's now. Just like what? And he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like what is happening? So everyone loves Gosling even more now, as they always do. Whenever he's just on screen, it's yeah. just like oh Gosling. Did he take his mum to the Oscars like this year? Sister. Ah. And she's like got massive tits, and everyone just thought it was some like, like some fit girl that was now his that girlfriend. Is- Taking a bimbo. Yeah, to, like, like, to like who is this slut? Why are you cheating on Eva Mendes Gosling? Who is this slut who's going to the Oscars? Oh, it's my like, sister. Oh, it's my sister. And it's like, well, she's very attractive. Congratulations, the Gosling family. <laughs> it's like, that's all I always could say. It was like such a weird thing. Like, everyone come out, like, who is this whore? And it was like, it's my sister. It's like, oh, well, she's lovely. That's nice to meet you. It's very nice to meet you. <laughs> So obviously last year we had the whole thing, Oscars so white and all that. We did. Ridiculousness. And, and it was two years running where there was no black nominations sure. in any of the major categories. Um, two years running. And, and so the thing is, this is going to seem really cynical of me to, to think this, but I, I first saw the trailer for Fences and Moonlight. And um, in my personal opinion, just judging by the trailer, I was like, that looks fucking awesome, Fences. That looks really predictable, and I already know everything that's going to happen in the movie. Yeah. Moonlight, yeah. and now I've watched them both. Pretty much, my opinions like were validated. like validated. Yeah, 
Like, <clears throat> it, even though I enjoyed Moonlight, I really thought it was a good film. Yeah. There are lots and lots and lots of things about it that make it not a very good film. Mm. Uh, whereas Fences, there are barely anything about there's barely anything about Fences that makes it not a perfect film. Yeah. yeah. It's really fucking good. <coughs> oh, so Fences, that's fucking ace. Well, that'll win the Oscar. Yeah. We'll do that. Oh wait. Uh, this film is about a poor gay black man. Ooh. Gay? He's Denzel Washington, not gay? <laughs> no, no. Denzel Washington is just a poor black man. In so he's a, str- he's a heterosexual? He's heterosexual, yeah. Fucking dick. He has a wife. Oh, shit. It's the wrong decision for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, Moonlight winning. It's the wrong decision, but the reasons behind it were right. Um, so, to that extent, yes. I don't really... Like, I can't be like, oh, it shouldn't have won because it's only one gay and black. Like, well, yeah, yeah it did, but so what? <laughs> right? Well, Essentially. I'm, but, I'm not... The reason I'm um, contesting the fact that uh, it was only because of that reason is because I loved Fences so much. Though. Yeah, of course. It's so not yeah, necessarily yeah. that I yeah, thought La La Land should have La La Land should have won <coughs> over Moonlight. Yeah, yeah. I just personally thought Moonlight had some ob- really obvious flaws. Yeah, flaws I, felt, I felt so as well. That Fences really didn't yeah, yeah. have. The main two, the two, the male leads don't have great chemistry at any point in the film. I feel like the third act is significantly weaker than any other act in the film, and it yeah. should, and it had to be fantastic it yeah. had to be the best part of the movie and but it was the worst on the flip side though i found it like um the first two acts i was thinking there's not much personality in the main yeah, character there isn't. absolutely whereas not. in the third act it's almost as if they just completely injected all, yeah, all yeah. the personality yeah. into him because um he started like having more banter of with course. people and stuff but like that's that not, that's, that's not to say a quiet performance it's not easy, you know. I think the two the two young lads did a great job. I just thought the casting was wonderful for the first two acts mm. because the kid from the first act it really did look like an older version of him. The next kid, yeah, like phenomenally good casting in that decision. And then it falls off a cliff when the guy at the end looks just nothing looks, like just looks like Fifty Cent. Basically. Just looks nothing <laughs> like the other two kids at all. Just doesn't look anything <laughs> like him. It's just like what? Like yeah, he might have hit the weights, but there's no like yeah. He's not just, he's, that doesn't mean you're been, ripped to hell. Like, he's like, been putting little weights on his. Cheeks, yeah, and just like every, moving just, his cheeks, like just fucking, just like it just looks completely <laughs> different, and it's like, and I thought, I thought it was a very strange casting decision, um, but the performances from the characters are very strong, like they all have very similar mannerisms, and you know, it, it's, it's a, it felt like a really collective performance, which you don't mm-hmm. see in a lot of films. Yeah. So for me, that was a really, really strong part of it in terms of the way that they, that they like kind of built the characters. They don't change that much, which I quite like. Yeah, of course, he's talking a lot more. He's sort of more like thuggy at the end. But in terms of the fundamentals of the performance, they were quite similar, um, mm-hmm. which I really did quite like about it. Um, but yeah, it just for me, it just the script wasn't particularly compelling. Mahashala Ali had the best character in the movie and needed to be in it more. Really needed to be in it more. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why he wasn't in it. I feel like a lot, again the beach scene for me as well. It's just a bit contrived. He's just at the beach because he's had a bit of a shit day. He just happens to be at the beach. We've not seen him like grieve there ever before he's just there and then his yeah. mate just happens to turn up who he who is attracted to him and they're both homosexuals yeah and they have like some home they have like sex on the beach and it's sort <laughs> of like, you know fundamentally but it's just sort of like it was a bit contrived he just turned up wasn't it like fucking hell just suddenly yeah. turns up oh what are you doing down here oh I just chill on the beach as well. Oh, do you? Great stuff. Fancy a hand job. It's like, <laughs> do you know, like it was. It was just a bit sort of like it was just as contrived that he just turned up and then that's how they had the big scene. Yeah. You know, like they could have just built I mean, to that a lot better. The, yeah, the the script. A very good scene, in fact. But it just it was contrived how the setup yeah. for it was just really contrived. The script didn't make it clear, like that they were friends from. Yeah, that exactly. Beginning you never point saw like, this to friendship. the second exactly. act. Exactly. Um, because he just kind of turns up at school as well yeah. and it's just like hey man I was just banging this yeah, chick and yeah. it's like oh okay why are you yeah. talking to me and I was just like who yeah. is that character yeah, yeah, yeah. but then it turns out that it is the, the character from, yeah, from the beginning, from yeah. The beginning yeah. but like but yeah but exactly it's not there's just nowhere near enough scenes of those two characters together mm. in my opinion because the, the relationship just doesn't feel compelling a, a movie that is built around a romance for me will always live and die on how good the romance is. I don't care how good anything else is that's happening in the film. Yeah. Like, the romance has to be really, really solid. They just... The two characters always lacked chemistry the whole way through. Mm-hmm. Like, at the end, it just didn't feel... Like, the big, big scenes at the end just needed to be, like... Pop, they needed to be coming off the screen, like, that these people are meant for each yeah. other. So, shall we say which film we believed should have won the Best Picture Oscar and... Um, 
yeah. sum up our reasons yeah, for yeah, of course, thinking yeah. that. So uh, you you're picking La La Land, I suppose. La La Land, yeah, I do think La La Land <laughs> was the best fit picture of this year. Um, mainly because it just it was just you don't see musicals being made that are this good. Sort of mm-hmm. very often. <laughs> well, certainly not now. <laughs> certainly not now. No, you don't. Um, it's it's a it's a real throwback, and there's basically if you want to like a tick box of everything a movie needs to do right to be very very good, La La Land just did everything it could possibly do. It did everything right. It's a really 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 complete picture. Um, it's a throwback to like a singing in the rain style picture that just don't get made don't get made anymore. And it's made to such using like modern f- cinematography techniques, um, really artistic stuff that's like you know proper cutting edge sort of like shots, you know real big long takes, um, you know like as modern. It, it looks about as modern a picture as it could possibly look. Mm-hmm. The the colours are phenomenal. Like the movie visually is just coming out of the screen sort of thing. Um, the script's great. Really cuts sort of that you really get behind the characters. You really want to see them sort of like. You know, it's a really believable relationship that you want to see succeed, um, which makes the ending so a bit of sweet. It, it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful film that I just had a, such a, a great time watching. So I'm I'm kind of fifty fifty between La La Land and Fences, because on the one hand I agree that on a technical level La La Land, like with the the very long shots yeah. and everything, just working so well in terms of cinematography and visuals. Um, I just think the performances in Fences were just way beyond anything we've seen this this particular year. Yeah. What I wasn't expecting from the film, because it is based off a play, is that it's it had like a bit of a journey to the whole film. Like it at first, the very first few scenes, like I thought, okay, I can really tell that this is based off a play. It's very static. The stood in in one garden, kind of chatting about life and stuff. Mm. But then it does kind of take this turn and it, and it becomes like the most engrossing film that I have watched in a long, long time. Like I was truly engrossed in this film um, and just lo- yeah, loving every second of it. So that's why I believe Fences should have, should have probably won the Oscar and definitely over Moonlight because uh, yeah, I wasn't engrossed in Moonlight at all. <laughs> uh, if there's one thing that um, I find is is kind of missing from the Oscars. It's anything anywhere near as good as the series Westworld. Oh, did you like Westworld, Jack? Yeah, Westworld is fucking awesome. Why are you bringing up Westworld so crudely on our Oscar roundup, Jack? Hmm, no particular reason. Next time on Real Talk, <laughs> we'll be discussing the ins and outs of the hit HBO drama Westworld, a show about robots the wild wild west and what it is to be alive.